This video is powered by As Always Entertainment. If you enjoy this content, consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com forward slash as always for access to the Patreon exclusive podcast, The Kill Connor Clubhouse, early access to the Cinema Room podcast, being a part of polls for future videos, and other early access material. With that said, please enjoy the video. So the dust has finally settled, and Kingdom Hearts 3 has been out for almost a full month. I've played it to completion and given myself plenty of time to let my thoughts sink in. Today I won't be giving any spoilers to the game's plot, and what I will be showing in terms of gameplay on screen won't be anything outside of the content shown in and around the trailers released during the marketing of the game. I want to give you my thoughts on the game's story spoiler free, its delivery on what I wanted after 13 years of waiting, as well as going into detail on my thoughts on the game in terms of its gameplay mechanics, pacing, and design elements. If you would like to hear my thoughts in detail with full spoilers, I did a spoiler cast episode covering everything in Kingdom Hearts 3. It's three hours long and was an absolute blast to do, so once you've finished this video, I highly recommend going and checking it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description for that podcast. Also, before we get any further into the video, I'd like to thank our Patreon producers, that is King Richard III, Josh Devlier, and Seth. Thanks for the support, guys. Now, most of you who have been watching my channel and listening to my podcasts for even a little while know how much Kingdom Hearts as a franchise means to me. How I have been a fan since the release of the first game back in 2002, and have grown up with it being one of my all-time favourite franchises. And of course how myself along with so many fans have waited 13 years for the moment we can say we have played to completion Kingdom Hearts 3. During this build up and long wait my expectations and anticipations was up and down like a roller coaster with a lot of twists and turns. I went into playing Kingdom Hearts 3 with a long list of wants and desires while at the same time having only a short list of what it would take for me to love the game. Ultimately what Kingdom Hearts means to me was just to finally play Sora once again. Fighting Heartless alongside my friends Donald and Goofy, traversing interesting and compelling Disney worlds. So in a lot of ways I would be easily pleased with this game for nostalgic reasons. But no doubt Kingdom Hearts 3 had to deliver a laundry list of plot points and connections that would be the culmination of the past 17 years of this magical franchise. With two main game installments, four side games, three movies and a mobile game, it was a tall order. Now overall I feel Kingdom Hearts 3 absolutely delivered on almost all fronts. It brought me back into the world I love so much, brought back all the characters I love and had me on another adventure traversing Disney worlds but in 2019. To have the technology of now put into a Kingdom Hearts game, I just don't know if they could have done it any better. The game is visually stunning, the combat flow was phenomenal albeit with a few minor critiques, the environments were all gorgeous and everything a Kingdom Hearts game should be in 2019. Now the soundtrack, the soundtrack. I think I can safely say that Kingdom Hearts 3 is the best scored game I've ever played. There was always fantastic music playing in every situation, whether it be story or just general gameplay moment, there was a piece of music there to complement it and create something extraordinary and memorable. The game's also polished as hell. I don't remember running into a single glitch or bug at all while playing. In terms of the story, it managed to deliver on all the built up plot points from all the previous titles in some way, shape or form, giving years and years of payoff in countless memorable moments. The only caveat to that is the plot was very top heavy in terms of delivery, giving probably the most insane 6 hours to any game I've ever seen, with the previous 25 hours being very spread out with its storyline. But ultimately, all the relevant plot details were accounted for when the credits rolled and for the most part I was very happy with the outcome. The biggest surprise to me with Kingdom Hearts 3 was how much it left me wanting more, left me absolutely intrigued by what is to come and not in a way that ignores the previous plot but builds off of it organically. Kingdom Hearts 3 was everything I needed it to be and more quite frankly. Now let's get into a bit more detail when it comes to the gameplay mechanics and main bulk of the game in terms of what it does really well. First off I loved the combat, it felt interesting and fun from start to finish for me, achieving this through simple things like Keyblade swaps during gameplay, 
The Keyblade forms were an awesome addition and the magic was by far the best it's ever been in the franchise. I found myself not feeling forced to use all these different combat and gameplay tools throughout, but actually wanting to use them all to diversify my gameplay strategies because it was just so much fun to do. Also having the ability to Keyblade craft, to be able to upgrade your Keyblade strength and magic was really needed in this game. So to finally be able to use the Kingdom Key as my primary Keyblade throughout the whole game without it feeling weak was just terrific. Other than a couple of minor features, I thought the gameplay was absolutely fantastic. The only added combat feature I really didn't like was the attraction flows. At first use, there was something cool, but very quickly grew into a super jarring feature that always felt out of place in the moment, bar the first and last uses of them in the game. Another negative comes from the game difficulty. Something I love about Kingdom Hearts is the ability for it to drive me absolutely insane. To continually die at a boss so much I have to walk away from my console or else I'm going to break something. The satisfaction to defeating that boss that has been driving you mental is something so special about the franchise. That was probably the only missing feature of Kingdom Hearts 3 to me. I played it on standard in my first run through and was over leveled at every turn so I probably have no one to blame but myself but I am looking forward to the possible addition of a critical mode later on down the track. However the boss battles throughout the game were just not very challenging. I didn't find myself often needing to strategize anything, rather I just mash X until I won. But certainly that's not every boss. This game does have some of the best boss battles in the entire franchise, it just lacks the consistency that most of the other Kingdom Hearts games have in terms of that. The Disney Worlds were a great highlight too, as they always are and should be in a Kingdom Hearts game. However, these are easily the best executed Disney Worlds in the history of the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Every single Disney World was lengthy, well paced, and it truly felt like you were in a Disney movie, rather than just a Kingdom Hearts world with a Disney movie theme around it all. The visuals helped that tremendously, to be in a world like Tangled or Frozen, and be completely lost in whether you're watching an actual Disney film or playing the game, to be captured by memorable moments from those films that you're so familiar with, but to be hit in a whole new way by them was truly masterful. Some worlds were, of course, better than others, but all had specialties and unique features. Each one was treated like its own game. Naval gameplay isn't relevant to any part of Kingdom Hearts, but it's relevant to Pirates of the Caribbean, so they put naval gameplay in the game, just for that world. Met combat for Toy Story, or just rolling on a snowball in Frozen, or to have the AR device in Big Hero 6, that is something you don't see enough commitment with in other games today, but Square Enix truly delivered that with Kingdom Hearts 3. To invest so much time in every detail was just terrific. I never felt like a feature in a world was missing. If the developers thought it should be in there, it was. One thing I wanted to note though, and maybe it's too much to ask, but I would have loved to have seen more worlds in this game. Both Disney and Kingdom Hearts original worlds. The game in some ways felt a little lackluster in that way that you knew all the worlds going in and there were no surprises coming, not even for Kingdom Hearts original worlds. Granted, so much detail was put into each world they did make, so it's a bit hard to complain too much. The total overarching story was also nicely teased and spread throughout these worlds, however, there were a few negatives to that. The most major one being the reason Sora, Donald and Goofy were traversing these Disney worlds in the first place and it was never really given any useful context. Sure we are told what Sora's task is, but it's so vague that the meddling in the lives of these Disney characters seem to be more of a habitual behaviour than a justified story purpose. You just kind of push through these Disney worlds waiting for the next story point to pop up. Thankfully these Disney worlds are all so terrific I found it easy to sort of look past that. The story also is very top heavy as I stated earlier. You have the majority of the game with a well spread out storyline like every other Kingdom Hearts game. However this game had to deliver so much story it felt like they were leaving everything until last minute. This was concerning while playing as the fear grows as how much they will be able to deliver on without rushing over a lot of story points at the end. Thankfully, even though much of the major plot points are left until the ending, the game delivers on them all in a timely and meaningful way. It gives probably the longest end sequence of any game I've ever played and was one of the most emotional, intense and shocking gaming experiences I've ever had. Though the pacing of these story points seems strange from a distance, I can't fault its execution in the end. Every character, every story point, every question I had was addressed and delivered on in some way, and I can say though not everything was absolutely perfect, it was pretty damn close to it, and I finished Kingdom Hearts 3 satisfied with my experience. After 13 years of waiting, 
building this current engine to make Kingdom Hearts games with, I don't see why the next main installment of Kingdom Hearts won't be something we get to play within the next four to five years. And it has my full investment and attention, as much as Kingdom Hearts 3 had. And that's what tells me more than anything, that Kingdom Hearts 3 delivered absolutely everything I needed it to. To not only have loved the game as it is, but also to have kept me engaged with everything that is happening going forward is the most I could have asked for. So I thank Square Enix for their patience in making Kingdom Hearts 3, for delivering everything I was hoping for, and continuing this franchise for years to come. Square Enix, thank you. Thank you. Alright, that is it for my review of Kingdom Hearts 3. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are new for new videos and podcasts every single week. Again, go check out the full spoiler cast review I did of Kingdom Hearts 3 in the description. That is episode 3 of the Cinema Room podcast. You can get that a week early over on patreon.com forward slash as always. And again, thank you to our Patreon producers, King Richard III, Josh Devlier and Seth. And thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.